images in uh, um, the unit on components that we're talking about in the Design Basics Index. And um, we're kind of closing the door now on supporting elements and, and switching over to images, which is another type of component. So, so far this year, we've already looked at, um, in the Design Basics Index, um, the components on um, Shape Workshop and looking at icons and supporting elements and things like that. And then we're going to move on to images. We'll look at color and then we'll finish off with typography specifically for components on this rather large unit. Um, and so images, how, how does that work? Um, well, we're talking about photography for designers as part of that little lesson on um, on images. So um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about on, on this particular video is how you could take practical photography basically with your phone because not a, not always are you going to be able to find the right types of pictures on the internet because of resolution problems or um, you just can't find a specific type of picture that's going to fit into your design very well so um, that's what I'm going to cover here sometimes the best option is to just go out and take the pictures yourself and drop them in and it works perfectly um, that, that's always a nice feeling so um, you'll notice that uh, here I am on on um, our web page uh, that I have a new section that's going to take about three hours total, maybe maximum. Shouldn't take you very long, but I'm going to give you till the 20th um, to be able to do this. <clears throat> so what I want you to do is kind of read through these and get to know the eight different guidelines to follow uh, when it comes to taking good pictures for your designs. Um, and these are common things that every uh, professional photographer follows um, when they're taking pictures. Um, if you were to take a photography class with me, we would cover these uh, things in greater detail. But we're going to go through them really fast, and I'm going to show you some examples while we do that. And then eventually you're going to finish up with uh, going out and taking some pictures on your own. So first you want to watch this video, of course, and then um, go outside, take a look around, scout um, your location. When I used to teach photography, I, I thought that that was probably the most important key to doing good photography is going out and scouting your locations first to make sure that the lighting is good, the color is good, all those things. Um, there's not any people around, of course, when you take your pictures. So, um, so, so let's look at this a little bit more carefully. Uh, there's approximately eight guidelines to consider when you're taking your own pictures. Um, some people call them rules of photography. I like to call them guidelines because you don't have to use them. It's something that you want to like um, make sure that you're actually you have these in the back of your mind before you take your pictures. And what's nice about, about this is we have our cell phones now, which are really good cameras that you can use when you go out and take your pictures. And, um, and uh, it usually gives you really good res resolution. Um, and there's a lot of bells and whistles just on your cell phone that you can get, like apps and that type of thing, for editing pictures and um, doing things like um, depth of field, which I'll talk about in a second here. Um, and uh, without you having to go ahead and get a point and shoot camera or, or an SLR, a really nice camera, but that would be nice to have. But um, you get your phone. So, okay. So, number one guideline that I will talk to you about is rule of thirds. This one's super important. Um, I put a couple of asterisks here. Uh, the asterisks are just saying that these two guidelines are something that you can consider and use as options in your photos, but are not always necessary to be there. They're just sort of an added thing that you can put on your photos and don't always have to have. Um, but something that you, you should consider. The other ones, though, are absolutely necessary to most pictures, um, are, are almost always considered when you're taking pictures. So the first is rule of thirds. So what is rule of thirds? So if you search up rule of thirds photography, you're going to see stuff like this, and you're going to get this nine square grid, which is really cool. You could turn this on on your cell phone, Google it, look it up, see how it, you could turn it on your cell phone. I don't want to get into that. but uh, what it does is it gives you this overlay of this grid so that you can compose your photo. And you'll notice with all of these different pictures is that our dominant subject, our subject matter that we're taking in the picture is offset from center because it's more aesthetically pleasing. Just, just think of it that way and trust me on this, um, that you're going to see uh, a lot of pictures where your subject matter is offset from the center. Not to say you couldn't take a picture dead center, but there's a good reason for taking pictures dead center. Um, you should have a, a really good reason why that is. It kind of keeps the center of focus and um, kind of creates a, a, a even more dominant feel. But in most cases, good photography, you're going to have your single dominant subject off center. So keep that in mind there. So you can see this tree is kind of off center to the right. And you're composing it on the left or the right third of your, or your picture. So 
this grid's really good for uh, lining up things um, vertically and horizontally in your picture stuff. It's like a skyline like you see here. It's kind of the skyline or the, the horizon lines in the lower third of the picture and two thirds of the picture is dedicated to the sky. That's good for things like um, doing landscape photography. But if you have people which kind of stand upright and look more vertical, you want to put them in the left or the right third of the picture on one of these two lines, just depending on, on where your subject is facing. You always want to face your subject into the picture um, when you're doing this. You can see this little guy running here is facing into the picture. Um, other things I could talk to you about uh, with uh, rule of thirds, here's one with a, a, a seashell that's done up close, is a good um, sort of reference to is where these lines converge. I kind of call these like little hot spots. That's kind of where you want the center of your picture to appear is where these two lines crisscross. So that's rule of thirds. Okay, framing. Um, this one is an optional guideline. Um, what can I say about framing? Now, photographers like to use framing a lot. Uh, framing is when you take your subject, your single dominant subject, and you surround it and frame it with the natural surroundings that you observe around your subject. And it just creates a more artistic, thematic looking picture. Doorways are really good for this, windows, that type of thing. So um, when you see this young lady sitting here in, the, in this forest, the sort of trees are sort of wrapped around her. So this is where scouting is really important when you go out to your location, because you want to look for little things like this that can actually play into your photography. Um, here's another good one with a tunnel that's being used. So bridges, tunnels, that type of thing. So for wedding photography, it's fantastic. But this, this bridge, and the opening to this bridge acts like a nice surrounding to encompass that couple. And of course, the couple is our focal point, our single dominant subject. Number three, simplicity. Keep it simple. So when you're taking your pictures, you're going to notice that really good photos have a single dominant subject. And it's, it's obvious and clear what the photographer wanted us to take a picture of. This seems so obvious, but you wouldn't believe how many people make the mistake of having to feel like they need to include everything in the picture or not observing the things that are not necessary in the picture and kind of leaving those things out. So when you see this flower, for example, it's very simple, beautiful picture. doesn't use rule of thirds, though, but that's the photographer's choice here. So you, like, I, like I said, you'll see some pictures where it's more centered, but you, you, it's, it's clear that we're supposed to see this flower and nothing else in the picture. So we, the, the photographer kept it simple. When they take the picture, um, here this girl's being sort of backlit, and so it creates a nice silhouette, which is some great photography here. But it's clear that you're supposed to see her and nothing else in the picture. So you want to eliminate things like distracting things in the picture. If you're doing a close-up of somebody's face, like that, making sure there's nothing else around that's distracting the viewer's attention from that. So keep it simple, simplicity. Um, well, you could also have, and that, that's why there's a little asterisk there, you could also, in most cases, um, you're going to keep it simple, but you could also have like a busier picture. But you have to be careful if you have a busier picture that that's what you intended it to be. Like a, maybe you're trying to showcase like a busy day at the beach and you have a lot of people running around, a lot of energy in the picture, then it's okay to add a lot of like action and, and, and extra stuff in the picture if that's your intent and if you understand what simplicity means. Number four, picture space. Picture space uh, sometimes is a little bit hard to wrap your head around because we're talking both about the actual frame of the picture and what's going to go on inside the frame of the picture, but also the depth in the picture from near to far from where you are standing to everything into the background of the picture and how far you want your viewer to see in the picture. Do you want to actually uh, keep the focus on one little part? So when we talk about picture space, we're talking about what's happening in the frame of the picture, but we're also talking about focus. So you can see here in this this leaf, it's a dominant subject, but but depth of field is when you when you see these lovely pictures here where there's a single dominant subject and then it quickly blurs the background and creates a nice sort of fluffy backdrop for everything to sit on top of. That's what we call shallow depth of field, um, and this is great for you when you're doing close-ups and portraiture and things like that. So here's the here it is with this flower too, and this also helps with the whole simplicity thing of keeping it simple and having a single dominant subject is if your camera will allow you to actually keep things out of focus in its surroundings, it will eliminate those distractions that would be in the background. So shallow depth of field. The other one would be what we call grid 
straight to the field where you're talking about things being in focus from near to far. So here you can see these little berries that they laid here on this close up. And then you can see everything in focus all the way into the background. Now, most of your auto cameras will have a great depth of field, will have a wide depth of field, meaning uh, you can see everything always from near to far because the camera is assuming that you want everything. You want to be able to see everything in the picture. But now with uh, newer iPhones and, and cool apps, it could create the illusion that there's a shallow depth of field where you get this, where it blurs the background and it keeps your focus on what you want your viewer to see and nothing else in the picture. So this would be shallow depth of field on the left and then great depth of field on the right. The other thing about picture space is what you, where you're putting it within the frame of the picture. And that's where kind of rule of thirds starts to come back into to play here is you're going to do the actual frame of the picture. So if it's a five by seven photo, which is a common photo size, you know, where you're going to have this bus, for example, it's in the lower right third of the picture. So those are things that you also want to consider. All right, moving over to um, number five, time of day and night. This is super important. A lot of people want to go out and take pictures around noontime when it's nice and bright outside. It seems like an obvious choice because you want a, a plenty of light, et cetera. But you have to be careful because if the sun is so strong, it's a super powerful light, it can actually blow out all your colors, make the shadows look really hard, um, make areas of your, your, your design look too bright, et cetera. So you have to be super careful how you are working with this. So make sure you keep that in mind as well. Um, what I could say about this is basically, uh, you gotta know your time of day. When are you gonna take your picture? So, um, and also what comes comes under this particular um, area is lighting and color as well. So um, how bright and dark your picture is is gonna matter. So six and seven also play along with the time of day and night as well. So make sure you're always considering that and the kind of the five, six and seven kind of go together here. So time of day and night. So um, when you see this, sort of sunset picture. It's gonna change things like your lighting and your and your colors of the pictures. So you got a lot of oranges and purples here. So I will say this about this, the best times of day, the magical golden hours, if you will, is if you're gonna go and shoot in the morning time and if you're gonna shoot in the afternoon. So um, make sure you're, you're keeping that in mind when you're taking your pictures, et cetera, is that, you know, what, what time of day you're doing it. Now the tough one here for the teenagers that, I, that I've taught in the past with photography is getting them to get up early in the morning and so if you're the type of person who likes to sleep and maybe go outside uh, later when the sun is setting and take pictures, you know, um, and, and know what time of day that's going to be. And it changes throughout the year. So a good way to uh, help you with that is Cambridge in color. Just take a second there if you can read that. It's Cambridge in color. Or Google it. Color spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. And what's nice about this is you can put in your zip code and it knows your location based on GPS and it can tell you what time of day the sun is gonna rise and set, et cetera, for our region in this Northern hemisphere, et cetera. It also has really cool little diagrams to show you what's happening with light as it falls across the subject at those particular portions of the day and what the light spectrum looks like. So you can see at midday what, what I'm talking about when the sun's directly overhead, how it can blow out all your colors. So you have to kind of be careful about that. So that's time of day, time of day and, and your, your lighting. So six and seven, um, lighting specifically, there's sort of four types of lighting that you need to know about and some that you wanna actually capture in your pictures. So there's reflected light, there's transmitted light, there's soft light and there's hard light. So transmitted light, let's start with that one. Transmitted light is where you actually photograph where light source is coming from. That's actually including the sun, for example, in your picture because that's our source of light in, in, in our actual photo in this case. So that's, uh, where's the light being transmitted from? Here you can see it's also in this sort of set. You can see the sun as well. And then they kind of superimpose these three together. Uh, you have reflected light going back to here. The light that is being reflected off of water and window panes and mirrors and things like that. Um, the soft light, the soft light in the picture would be sort of the ambient light that's being reflected back against these rocks. We can see the transmitted light is coming from this side over here and it's bouncing off of this water and it's illuminating the backs of these rocks. And then um, the last would be things like hard light, which would be like a uh, harder light that's being cast um, on a bright portion of the day. Some good examples of, of hard light. 
but this would be, I would say the stronger that the light is, the more hard the light is. So here's, here's an example of soft light. A good indicator of this is how hard or soft the shadows are. So you can see the shadows on her face are very soft, so we know that the light is soft because it's being reflected back up into her face. It's not being shined directly on her face. Okay, last but not least is color. Things to consider with color. Just know that when you take pictures, your color changes the mood, just like it would with the elements and principles of design and, and art. Um, and so it can actually tell a different story. So be considerate of your colors uh, when you're taking uh, your pictures. And lighting can really change that. Like I said, you're going to get more dramatic color in the earlier part of the day or the later part of the day, and you're going to get more washed out looking colors if the sun's directly overhead. Now, that being said, if the sun is directly overhead and that's the only time of day you could shoot, you might want to shoot in shadier areas to see if you could play with that. There's always ways to experiment with this when you're talking about color. Um, and there's also the consideration of actually taking the color out completely and, and shooting um, pictures that are in black and white. But you have to have a camera app on your phone that will be able to allow you to change that to black and white photos. Um, and what black and white photos do is it actually takes um, more of the theme out of it and, it and it really focuses on the subject matter. So that's why you'll see like a lot of black and white photos and documentary um, photography and documentary pictures and that type of thing. Um, that is uh, the color stripped out of it so that your focus is on the subject matter there. So that's it for this video. Um, make sure that you uh, uh, follow the instructions and uh, you know what to do with this before you begin. Uh, you're taking two pictures uh, for each of the different examples that I talked about and, uh, and that's it. So have fun with it um, and I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and I will see you in the next video.